What's going on everyone? It's Mike back again and it's a little bit of an update video. A little bit of an update video. Everton are in talks with Ruben Venagre. They, uh, the news broke last night that the Sporting Lisbon uh, left back slash right back can play in both positions. Very versatile player. Some of you guys would have known him from his days at Wolves where he was very skillful, uh, very quick, can beat a man. Um, I liked him. I actually thought he was a really good player. Um, and he is potentially on his way to Everton on loan with a deal that would look like Everton pays wages with an obligation or, or potential to buy next summer. Now, deals like this I don't have a problem with. Um, I think he's good cover. I think we've got Mikolenko who's done really well. And if you move him over to the right-hand side, which, which he has done in the past, um, then it's good cover for Nathan Patterson or Seamus Coleman. But I'm kind of fed up of consistently signing left and right backs, personally. I, I, you know, again, I'm, I'm really passionate about players going forward. And look, Vanagre is a player that can do that. He's a player that can probably play as a winger as well. He's got that pace, he's got that delivery and he's got that skill. But he's not getting into a Sporting Lisbon side. He, he left Wolves. He's not putting up any trees and, and this is again it's one of those signings that just says to me that yeah he's available so go and sign him it's it's not a it's not Everton going and getting the cream of the crop or it's or, or a player that Everton specifically need it's just like he's there so let's take him and this is the thing that's annoying me about this transfer window because it seems to just be like that it literally seems to be that Every, every signing we're being linked to, we've been, li we've been linked with numerous players. And it's almost like, yeah, we'll just throw Everton in the mix because they need players. You know, the facts are, again, we are now 10 days or whatever it is before the start of the season. 11 days, 12 days, whatever it is. And we still haven't got, let's be honest, a midfield that actually does anything, you know, of any, of any note. And, and we're not addressing the problems, you know. My, I'm sitting here and thinking, the problem for me is not the left and right back. And and, and to be honest, we can probably wing left and right wing at the minute. The, the big, glaring, obvious issue is in the centre of Everton's midfield. And yet again, it's not a player that ticks that box. It's not a player that fits in that position. It's not a player that's, that's going to do that job. And... I'm starting to get frustrated with the fact that why are we doing this? Like, why are we signing players consistently that we might not need? You know, we we signed Nathan Patterson in January last year. He didn't play. He didn't play. We so obviously we didn't need him. We wasted sixteen million pound on him. You know, Mikelenko. Yes, we we signed him from the Luca Dean money. But when you when we are where we are. You know, we needed a right back this summer. We've needed a right back for years. So I'm not against having a right back, which Nathan Patterson was. But in the end, Coleman played anyway. So for me, it's kind of like it's just another player in a position. We've been linked with, with letting Niels Nkonku go. Again, I don't get that because Niels Nkonku is actually more than capable of beating a man delivering a cross. And we've seen it. Loads of times, like we have seen it, we saw it against Minnesota, we've seen it in America. This is a kid that has got that in the locker. He's played in a Premier League game for Everton. You know, he is a capable player, but yet he's not going to get he's not going to get any time. I, I I I just don't understand. Like I don't understand Everton's thought process, and and I can't imagine Lampard being happy about this because, you know, we're. we're we're being linked with these moves for players, but they're not in positions we need, and he knows that. I just don't. I just don't understand. I don't understand. Um, another player that has been linked with a move away from Everton, which we all knew was going to happen, is Moise Keane or Moisa or however you pronounce his name. He looks like he will be leaving to Juve on a permanent deal for thirty-two million euros. It's a it's a bit of money in the coffers. What's interesting though is if you if you say that was was fifty plus ten, so say fifty, and this guy is is twenty eight or 
and say 23 of that is up front, whatever. That technically means we're £73 million in the green this summer. And the fact we haven't spent any money as well, it makes me wonder what's going on. Um, it, I don't know whether Mishiri and, the, and, and Thurwell and the board and... I don't know whether they're playing shit or bust, if I'm being brutally honest, and, and, and chancing it until January. And if we're in trouble, then they'll go and spend some money. But at the minute, we don't even look like we're going to spend money. We look like it's it's loan FC at the minute. Everton are stadium slash loan FC right now because they're the only things that seem to be happening. The stadium's being built and we seem to be getting players on loan. I don't... I, I'm not feeling it. Um... Obviously, Vanagri will come in, and I'm pretty sure you can have two Premier League loans and a, and a loan from abroad, or two loans from abroad, or whatever the rule is. So it, it leaves room for loans. Everton have been linked again with Brozier, and apparently they they will enter the race now that West Ham have apparently called off uh, Maxwell Corne or Corne. Um, he apparently uh, not Forest have pulled out of talks, but look at. Look at the players we're getting linked with and look at the teams that they're being linked with as well. So, I don't know. I, yeah, I would love to come on this video and say, yes, you know, Everton are signing X, Everton are signing Y, and, and it's great, and you feel that the club's going forward, etc. But it, it's it's shocking, actually. It, it's actually shocking. Um, but we do this... Every season, you know, we've only had Alan and Decore two years this month, or or last month, whenever they signed, and they and they've done nothing of note. You know, we've got big wages. Andre Gomez again has been touted all over Europe to leave. He's been told he can go and find a club. He was told he was told that in January. He was he was he's been told that in the past. Who's going to pay hundred and twenty grand a week for him? You know, if somebody said to me, you're going to be paid 120 grand a week and you ain't going to have, any, have to do anything, maybe sit on the bench occasionally. Uh, so, But we've done this to ourselves. We, we we have done this to ourselves, and I, I don't even think like lessons are, are being learnt. Um, it makes me feel sick. It ma it makes me feel sick. It it's not good. Like it, it it's not good. Um, the position we are in, needing players, having lost our best player or arguably our best player, um, is is shambolic. Our most creative player on that football pitch against Blackpool, by the way, people, where we conceded two goals, was James Tarkowski. What is that about? So, yeah, I, I have major concerns this window, ma major concerns. And I, I don't think Vinagre is a player we need. I'm not saying I don't I don't think he's a good player. I think he I think he was a young player that, that's got potential. Um, I said when he first broke onto the scene at Wolves, because my friend's a Wolves fan, I said he's a player with potential, he's got, got a little bit of quality about him. Um, but... I... Oh, I sort of sit there and just reluctantly think, you know, I'm concerned. Like, I, I am genuinely reluctantly concerned and there is no positive. It, you know, if we were sitting there being linked with players that I felt like would at least improve us, so at least make us go forward slightly, then I'd be fine. But I don't think Benagri adds that. And I, I don't... I, to be honest, I don't even think Brozier adds that, if I'm being brutally honest. So... Because if you can't get the ball to these players through midfield, which is what we are absolutely screaming out for, what's the point? I mean, you can, you can literally have... You could have Harry Kane up front, but if you can't get the ball to him, he can't score goals. We saw that with Chelsea and Lukaku. He didn't fit, he didn't work. And, and Everton can sign any forward player they want, any defensive player they want, but if, if the middle of the pitch doesn't work, either way, forward or backwards... We ain't going anywhere, so apart from apart from backwards, like we're only going backwards. So yeah, it's just pants, man. <laughs> it's just it's just dead out. It's just dead out. So yeah, I'm I'm so happy. So happy. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. 
I think that's it. I don't think there's anything else to really sit here and, and, and go on about, to be honest. I, I am uh, struggling. I'm st I'm struggling. I, I, and I'm sure all you are. You know, we could sit here and uh, I, re I remember four years ago. It might have been a bit longer than that. I remember sitting in the car doing one of them videos, you know, that bim ba bom bom be here oh bom bo we do 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 all of that intro and you know, I was really positive coming on here. Yeah, what's going on everyone? It's my back again, blah 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 blah. But now I'm sitting here like fucking hell, what this club done to me. <sighs> so yeah. Just keep smiling. Hey, eh? thanks. Thanks for your support as always. And uh yeah, peace.